guys, this is Paul from uh, Just For The Trek Of It. I am making a pop can stove today for our trip to Algonquin uh, at the end of May. So I wanted to kind of give you guys a rundown of how I'm going to make it and uh, do a little video showing you guys how to make your own. So to start with, basically laying out the tools. So we're going to need a couple of pop cans, uh, beer cans, whatever you got on hand, standard can, um, a pair of scissors, cut some of your metal parts pair of pliers because you're going to have to do a little bit of twisting and some sharp edges. A sharp utility knife. Um, this one is actually a mini blade. I don't know how well you guys can see that, but it is a pretty tiny blade. And this part here is a custom part that I made on my 3D printer that actually holds this blade to make a jig, basically to size your cuts perfectly. So. Um, obviously I imagine not everybody's got a 3D printer, but I'll include the files for this in the description so you guys can actually 3D print one if you have a 3D printer. If not, what you're going to want is basically a system of measurement or blocks, wood, whatever you have that measures off 20 centimeters, or sorry, 20 millimeters, about three quarters of an inch, uh, 25 millimeters, about one inch, and then 35 millimeters, which is a little bit about uh, one and th one and one third inch, so maybe one and three eighths ish, somewhere around there. Um, and then you're going to need a drill, with preferably the smallest bit you have. Um, I believe that this is a one sixteenth or one thirty second bit. Um, so if you don't have a drill, you can use nails, uh, punch. Um, the end of a sharp screw, whatever you have on hand, doesn't have to be fancy, as long as you can make holes and uh, kind of uh, gauge how big of a hole you want. So you're going to want a small hole for your burner, and you don't want anything too huge, otherwise you're not really getting any kind of pressure. So, first thing that we need to do is basically get the bottom out of this can. So, using your utility knife, um, I don't know if how well you guys can see this, but I have basically scored a line. Now some people say to go right up to the edge. Um, after reading a bunch online and getting some information there, it was actually suggested not to go all the way to the edge, just because the hole is so big um, that you get less back pressure, so you don't actually get quite as much of a burn, and you end up burning a lot more fuel. So saving fuel is pretty important to getting this stove working and uh, making it useful. So once you've scored your edge, you're going to want to kind of press in a little bit harder, try to do a couple of turns around, and try to cut through most of the material if you can, um, to the point where it's basically something that you can kind of press out with the pliers. So. I'm going to go back through, rescore this edge a little bit, try to get it down and uh, a little bit deeper, and then I'm going to press it out with the tip of the needle nose pliers, kind of uh, press into it a little bit until one of the lips kind of gives, and uh, then pop it out. So I will go ahead and do that there while you guys are, you know, getting through editing, and uh, I'll be right back. Alright guys, so basically once you've got that scoring done, if you have needle nose pliers, you can just kind of whack it once in the middle, give it a good hard whack, and you'll basically pierce the bottom. Now once you've got it pierced, you just kind of want to give it can opener action until you get close to the ridge line that you've created on the bottom of that can. Once you've gotten to that point, it's more or less like peeling open a can of, I don't know, beans or something. Basically, you just kind of want to peel it back towards the center, and you'll see the edge just kind of lifts away from that score mark. Now, you want to be careful because one, obviously this is going to be really sharp, and you don't want to cut your fingers, you don't want to cut anything else. But two, you also want to be careful as you pull that it is tearing on that score line so that everything stays nice and rounded and uh, so that uh, you're not basically ripping the edge off your stove um, because without that edge you're not going to have anything to hold your pot so just kind of gently pry up along the edge and go around 
a little bit at a time, have some patience, take your time, and eventually you will get to the edge, and then you can just kind of pinch it, pull, and out she comes. So now you've got yourself a nice little opening there that's not too big, um, but uh, will still give you a good opening to flame into uh, to start your fire. Now you do have to watch, um, like I said, these edges are very sharp. I would recommend if you have some sandpaper, um, basically just go around the edge, sand it smooth so that if there's no burrs or anything like that that might catch you. Right now, I can tell you that I would not stick that anywhere near my pack. Um, if you're carrying it inside of a container and there's nothing else going into it, not going to kill anything, but if you threw this loose into your pack, it would probably catch on something. A piece of nylon, a piece of webbing, whatever you've got in there, clothes, and uh, tear it to shreds. So you definitely want to avoid that. So sand this out if you can, just kind of smooth it out. Uh, make sure that your edges are at least semi-smooth. Obviously it's a thin can, it's going to be sharp regardless, but the safer you can make it, the better. So once we've got that hole punched in, next thing we're going to want to do is basically drill our holes. So we don't want to actually cut the can yet um, because it's got that structural stability right now. There's nothing that's going to crush it or bend it or anything like that. So this is the best time to basically drill out your holes. What I would suggest is basically go through, drill a hole on either side. Once you've got that done, drill a hole right in between those two. Once you've got that done, drill a hole between each one of those four. So now you've got four more. Once that's done, one more set in between the ones that you have, and basically at that point you're going to have a full set of holes. This way everything's symmetrical, it keeps it even, and keeps your flame even as well. So I'm going to go ahead and do that for you. We'll speed things up in editing a little bit so you don't have to sit here and watch board while I drill holes. And um, we'll see you on the other side. Alright guys, so there you have it. Basically you've got your burner holes. So basically what you're looking for is to try to have them as evenly spaced out as possible. However, obviously as you can see, it's not perfect. You want perfect? Go buy yourself a brass stove from REI or Mech or somewhere there that sells them. You're not watching this video because you want something expensive. You're looking for something cheap and simple. So this will basically do the job. You've got enough burner holes on here to get yourself a little stove going and you've got basically what you want. Be careful with the shavings that you end up with after drilling. Um, you don't want to sweep them on the floor because catching one of these in your foot, um, basically you're, you're going to be limping for a little while and a lot less likely to be doing any hiking or backpacking with this stove. So once you've got this basically drilled out cut out, next thing we need to do is lop it off. So we need to separate this can um, into two pieces. Now the top part is basically going to fit into the bottom part so that you've got your cup, your bowl basically. Um, and so what we want to do is take our jig, or in this case if you don't have the jig, basically you want to measure the 20 millimeters from the lip. In other words, you'd lay the can down like this, measure up from the table surface 20 millimeters or three quarters of an inch. So in my case, I am going to use my jig on the 20 millimeter setting and basically we're just going to hold it in place and turn our can. So what this is doing is basically creating a score mark at exactly 20 millimeters around the can. Now, you're going to want to go around a couple times because a single pass is really not going to give you a deep enough score mark to really achieve any results. 
but you don't want to press too hard because if you do press too hard what you're going to do is you're going to crush and deform the can and then you're going to have to start over and redrill all those holes and basically cut out your hole in the top once more which is a big pain in the butt so you want to try to avoid crushing it and putting too much pressure on it just enough to create that score and just kind of keep biting into it as you go through so as you go through it's going to keep digging just a little bit deeper a little bit deeper a little bit deeper and you'll start feeling it on your fingers and once you start feeling that ridge line really kind of bulging out a little bit on the edge of your fingers then you should be good to go um, so give it a couple passes make sure that you get it in and you might actually start peeling some of the can away as you go through you're going to get a lot more noise as you hear the blade kind of cut into the inside of the can you'll hear the echo coming out from the inside and that's what we kind of want to look for is once it starts biting like that you want to stop because otherwise you are going to crush the can so once you've got the score line now it's going to be hard to see that score line here but you basically got it right here under the white line once you have that score line you can kind of press in on the can and you'll see it just kind of pops apart so if you look at that it's just kind of popped open so then you can kind of go around the can and that's it you've now have your top hurts your top part sorry um, as you can see basically at that point everything's ready to go so that's your top part for now we'll come back to it so we're gonna set that one aside now we need to build our bottom part so we're gonna need a second can and we are going to move up to level two on our jig or the one inch mark on your board or if you measure it out um, you can measure it from the bottom again measure from the bottom lip or from the surface of the table one inch up the side give it a mark and if you want to eyeball it that's an option too you can kind of hold a, a marker at that level um, and um, cut it with either a pair of scissors or a, um, a utility knife myself like I said I like the jig it just makes life easier um, because I don't have to worry about my blade moving and it's perfectly level with the table at exactly one inch so basically the exact same process as you did before on the other can just a little bit higher up in the air slowly move it around and continue to score it as far as you feel uh, necessary and again when you start feeling it kind of bite in or hear it you'll hear that kind of sound change from a grinding to kind of a, a popping sound you'll know that you are deep enough into the metal that you can kind of start popping the edge out a little bit again so getting there here okay so the blade actually bit in on this part so I know that it's popped so now we can kind of grab it and start doing that little pressing motion. Again, take your time and just kind of, basically you're just peeling the edges away from each other. So right here, you can see that edge kind of started flowing upwards. If that's the case, go over to the other side and start moving that one so that you don't start peeling up away. Okay, so we now have our stove bottom and our stove top. Now we need a wall. Basically the wall goes in between and as you can see the edge right where that lip is on the bottom of the can, it basically has that small depression in it. Um, basically we're going to build a wall that fits in that circle and up into the edge of this circle so that they fit together and basically you're building an inner wall. What that does is you basically pour your fuel into the middle and you have little slots in the bottom of the wall that kind of let the liquid flow into that outer wall, that outer rim. 
And basically because of the pressure of the liquid at the top in the middle, it's basically pushing down into the wall, up under that wall, and basically pressurizing your gas out of the actual burner ring on the outside. So for that, basically size-wise, you do need it to be bigger than your 20 millimeters, bigger than your 25 millimeters, because you're basically fitting the two together. So in total, we're going with 35 millimeters, and that's basically going to be our final size. So what you can do is you can take the original can, one of the original cans, and basically we're going to graduate up to the 35 millimeter mark, and we're gonna do the same thing as we did before. We're gonna take that can and we're gonna score it. Now, with this, I don't suggest spinning your can around because that is going to cut whatever surface that you've got it on. Now, basically all I'm doing with this is just I'm going to make a score mark. I'm not actually going to do the squeeze method to kind of pop this open. We're gonna use a pair of scissors and kind of cut it out of the metal once it's scored all the way around. So the score in this case is mostly just uh, as a measurement, not necessarily as an actual uh, cut. So once you've got that score mark, uh, a little bit hard to see, but if you can see some of that shine right here, basically once you've got that score mark, you can actually cut it with a pair of scissors. Now, what I would recommend is before you start cutting into your actual line, cut up the can about halfway, and then you can actually just scrappy cut over the top. Now that cut doesn't have to be decent or straight. Um, as you can see, it's really crooked, but that's okay. Basically what we wanna do is just kind of get the metal so that it's free and open so that there is nothing kind of in the way. Uh, once you've got that cut, you can then cut along your score line and get your straight piece. All right, so there we have it. So now we have our inner ring. So we've got our bottom, our top, our inner ring. And basically what we want to do is just kind of fit it and size it. So you want to basically put it in that little depression that I was telling you about and more or less measure where the two parts line up. Um, now, realistically, the best thing to do in this case is just notch it. Um, you can basically just take a pair of scissors and kind of notch the two pieces together. So you get basically just a little notched out mark just to uh, kind of get the, uh, the, the line up. Now what you want to do here is more or less, we're going to want to slide these two pieces together so that they stay together so they don't unravel like that. So with one of your notch marks here, we just want to extend it about halfway or maybe just a little bit over halfway. And then we want to actually go to the opposite side of our notch mark on the other side of it and go up about halfway. Or again, just a little bit over halfway. So once you've got that done, these two will basically slide into each other and create a ring that doesn't come apart anymore. So as you can see, I can let this go and it's gonna stay perfectly still. Now you can trim some of the edges back. It's not a huge deal because it's going to be sealed in here. So it's not a big issue. But now you can see I can put it in and let it go and it doesn't kind of undo itself. So once we've got the ring made, we need to cut the notches. Now these notches, like I said, basically when you fill up your stove, you won't be able to see the outside. You won't be able to get to that outside wall. So you fill up the middle. What happens is your fuel has to go into the middle and then get to the outside wall somehow. So that's where those little notches come in handy. So basically what you want to do is just cut a couple of triangles. Um, they don't have to be big. 
just enough to let some liquid through. Um, and basically for me, I would say maybe a little bit more than an eighth of an inch, maybe three sixteenths uh, or four or five millimeters. Um, basically, you just want a little triangle cut out like that. And that basically lets the fluid kind of flow to the outside. Now, I would probably recommend get, having at least three, um, probably four would be best. So I am going to make four altogether. So once you've got the four notches made, we should be ready to permanently put our ring in. So as you can see, the four notches there. So again, make sure your notches are facing down, otherwise they won't do you a whole lot of good. And once you've got those notches facing down, we need to get the top on. Now, with the top, there's some people that say cut it and kind of uh, crimp it in a little bit. I don't like to cut it because it kind of reduces some of the integrity of the can. Um, and I find that you're just basically pressing it in and it's not going to actually stay in there very long. So what I would suggest is basically with this is if you take a pair of pliers, again, needle nose pliers, um, preferably of course, and what you want to do is just kind of give it a little twist. Every about three quarters of an inch or so, just kind of twist it in. And all you're doing is basically pinching in that bottom part of the ring so that it's got a little bit narrower opening than the actual can itself, the top of the can. Um, and basically you're just twisting to create a kind of indent and to pull in the material a little bit. Now you can go back through and make it even smaller if you want. Um, for me, I'm going to try this first and see if I can squeeze it in. And as you can see, it does squeeze in just nicely. So all you want to do at this point is just kind of press and get it in as far as you can. So basically what we're doing is we're pressing that inside wall inside here into this top ridge so that everything's nice and tight. Okay, so once everything's together, as you can see, it does come back apart. Now, what I would probably recommend for a permanent solution to that, you've got a couple of options. Um, some people suggest using um, like a muffler or a uh, exhaust manifold glue. I personally don't like that idea very much because the idea of me burning a chemical that's designed to glue two pieces of steel together and eating off of it, not exactly thrilled with that idea. So what I would probably recommend is if you can get um, some aluminum tape. Now don't use duct tape. Duct tape is very different from aluminum tape. It will melt. It will turn into a puddle of glue and uh, you're just going to have a giant mess in your bag. The aluminum tape looks like aluminum foil with a sticky coating and it is usually used for vents and other things like that. It's a more kind of professional version of duct tape um, and it is made for ducting. Uh, there's also exhaust tape um, which is basically tape designed to plug up little holes in exhaust pipes. Um, it's not hard to find. You can probably get a roll of it for five to ten bucks. Um, and that's definitely what I would recommend. Once you've got that, you basically just want to put a strip around here just to make sure that everything's sealed up nice and tight and so that nothing comes apart. Once uh, you've got everything together, that's basically it. You are ready to go. So you basically just put this stove down, add your fuel to the middle, wait a couple seconds, light your flame. What it's going to do is, like I said again, it's going to press the fuel inside through the wall onto the outside and come out your burners. So when you set your pot on top, you may be blocking that main hole with the pot, but your burners, since they are down off this lip, 
they're actually burning upwards and to the outside of your stove and the outside of your pot at that point it is basically going to continue burning and heating up your food uh, or your water in this case so i hope this helped uh, educate some uh, someone and uh, help people out with it have a good one